Hello and welcome to Time Hack. I'm your host, the Minuteman, and today we're going to do my two week review of my Dusak Forza All Titanium Dive Watch. Let's get into that intro. for coming by and checking out this video it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed hit the bell icon for further notifications give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it and definitely leave a comment tell me how you think things are going with the channel if you like the watch if you don't like the watch where do you think I should go next what's my next video speaking of next videos I I've been tossing around the next watch idea for my next review and I think it's gonna be this guy this guy right here is my Marlo Murar it's a uh, Scottish watch inspired by Loch Morar I've never been to this Loch I've been to Loch Ness and definitely th this is blowing my mind right now I love this watch uh, so I think this is gonna stay on the wrist I also think that mm, two weeks might have been a lot because halfway through this, I was kind of wishing I was wearing another watch. Not because I didn't like this watch, but I've got so many other watches I'd like to rotate through. Let me know in the comments if you think I should stick with two weeks or is it okay if I just run one week and form an opinion based off of that one week. Let me know in the comments. But all right, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the star of the show today, the Forza. Let's roll into this by talking about the packaging, right? So this is a pretty high speed looking packaging, right? We got a, a sleeve. We're going to go ahead and uh, get that guy out of here. You had a sleeve, a sleeve to protect your box, right? You got this great box with a uh, embossed logo here bright red really good looking color so we uh we had a sleeve to protect the box but it's not just the box it was a box to protect the box so let's go ahead and move our our box out of our protective box and just go ahead and get this out of the way our box is protected by some foam sheet here get that out of the way and now we're presented with a nice glossy red box with a printed logo here I honestly think this is a pretty nice looking box I mean look at these hinges on here that's that's kind of nice um, so when we open it up here we got ourselves a little foam insert to kind of keep everything protected we have the watch warranty and other paperwork an applied logo on this felt material I think felt might actually just be a term for a particular material and it's kind of been applied to anything that looks like it um, you know okay great so we got this with box here um, the, the watch has already been sized to me um, it's kind of sucking it in right now on this here pillow because the pillow has got a bigger wrist size than I do um, let's go ahead and free this pillow here. Oh, wow. Look at that poor pillow. Okay, guys. So that was our box. Let's go ahead and take a look at our paperwork. The paperwork that you get here, we have a user manual, which, you know, I normally assume, I, I've seen from most watches that are, you know, powered by NH35s, you get a generic um, manual, but this is actually for the Forza watch. Um, but, you know, it's pretty intuitive to use. I didn't really look at the manual. 
let's go talk about our international warranty card. You ready for this? This is the mark of excellence. It's not filled out. Like, how would I ever go <laughs> to get anything done on this watch under warranty, which it, it just no longer is, uh, which is a shame because I have a complaint, but we'll get to that later. So this I'm SLL on. Now we have this high speed titanium card. This card is not made of titanium, but it's gonna go ahead and tell you all about titanium. It tells you about what situations titanium has been used in. It tells you that it's 30% stronger than steel. Um, it's hypoallergenic, yada, yada, yada. Super Hua titanium card to get you amped for that titanium watch you have. Now, don't get me wrong. I bought the watch specifically because it's titanium, but I had to laugh a little bit at this uh, super high speed, low drag titanium card. It definitely got me hyped and amped to own this watch. Okay guys, now we're gonna move on to the watch itself. We're gonna go ahead and get our dimensions out of the way up front. My favorite measurement, lug to lug, is going to be about 47 millimeters. So there you go guys, 47 lug to lug, pretty decent lug to lug, um, still under, that will work for most wrist sizes, so I, I like that for sure. We're measuring, this doesn't have crown guards, so we're just getting the diameter of the case here, which is 39. What? A, that's a great size. That is a, you know, I prefer 40s, but 39 works for me, and I think most people would agree on that. Now let's go ahead and get a thickness reading here. About 13.9 in our thickness. Let me go check that again. 14 um, okay so that go at, that knocks out our dimensions here for this little beauty let's move on to our bracelet so all titanium watch to include a bracelet that is great that's what I'm looking for in a titanium watch you know I don't I buy it I bought the titanium because I wanted that light feel on a braceleted watch. I don't really like heavy watches. Uh, I like to kind of forget that it's on my wrist. And with titanium, you achieve that result. So you got a 20 millimeter lug to lug here, which is perfect. You see all these straps here. I'm gonna have a little watch fashion show for you guys here. Um, 20 millimeters is perfect. You're gonna find a lot of straps for it. You start off at 20 with the bracelet, this end length here. You run all the way down to just before the clasp, and that is where you're going to hit 17.8 millimeters. So you got decent taper down to the clasp. However, you're going to bump it up at the clasp. This goes up to 19.7, so you almost go right back to your 20 millimeters at the end. Uh, not a big deal. I guess, you know, maybe you feel a little more secure with a larger clasp. Um, not, a, not a big complaint here. Now, my complaint does have something to do with the clasp, but I like this etched logo. That's great. You got a signed clasp. And then you have this depth here where the fold over goes in. That's great. And you kind of have some ridging on, um, on the clasp here. So that's kind of an interesting little bit of depth um, to, to your clasp there. You have a milled clasp which is nice mark of a uh, mark of quality um, and foresight in manufacturing there now my complaint comes in let's let's see if I can go ahead and demonstrate uh, if I flex during the day this will kind of pop up ever so slightly and it'll kind of just be something I can I can tap on and get a sound out of I don't like that so if, if I'm moving in the day open and close in my hand, you can open up this fold over, which kind of defeats the purpose of the fold over. It's supposed to add security. 
you got your double pushes here. That's a nice feel. Um, you get a pretty good lock on your clasp here. Um, you've got three micro adjusts on your clasp, which is pretty standard across most most watches, I would say. So not a complaint there. So let's go and talk about the crystal. So I will try to show a video of this guy in the sunlight, but the AR is great. You can read this dial in heavy sunlight, no problem. I like that you kind of have this domed effect that tapers up to the, the face of the crystal and gives you just great distortion from different viewing angles of your uh, indices. You know, head on, head on look at this watch. You can see distortion pretty much throughout the perimeter of your dial, which plays well with these wonderful indices which we will get into later so plenty of ar coding um, nothing to worry about there which makes it super functional out and about in the field so you got your bezel here which is a ceramic insert you know those we've got sapphire crystal we've got ar coding we've got titanium and ceramic the materials behind this watch are phenomenal i don't know what the number of clicks here is to this bezel and most of the time let me go put it on my wrist to actually use this bezel here most of the time it's pretty stiff to use um i don't have any issue with that so a pretty stiff bezel um sometimes you know if you're not using it a fair amount it tends to kind of lock up on you which, I guess in a dive circumstance, that is what you'd want. You want to set it and forget it. You're not going to bump it and move it um, without you actually putting in some, some effort here. So, I'd say, overall, a good bezel. It's got a nice sound. It doesn't sound tinny. Um, and your triangle up here lines up with your 12 nicely. Um, you also have a loomed bezel, I should mention as well. Not only are you getting ceramic, but you're also getting a loomed bezel insert. Okay, guys. Now, let's go ahead and talk about that dial. You have applied indices, and they are framed in kind of like chrome, silver look here. And it catches the light so well. You, it just it catches the sunlight perfectly around all your markers, and it's a joy to look at. So surrounding those or filled in those markers, you have plenty of loom. I don't know what loom is used here, but whatever it is, is is on par with Seiko. Um, this thing will glow like a torch if you let it charge up in the light long enough. Um, so yeah, no problems with legibility in low light, provided you have it charged, which is my only complaint about non-electronic loom, is it's got to be charged for it to be worth anything. Um, so you do have a printed logo. That's where the application of things on the dial ends. You got a printed logo. You have automatic printed on there letting you know hey say go in age 35 pretty much um you got a color match date wheel which is phenomenal it's great it doesn't distract it's there for you to use um and then you see 250 meters or 620 feet water resistance so you know dive watch um i'm a desk diver so this is not ever going to be challenged like that and the crown is screwed down and actually takes a good while. There's plenty of threading on here. And has a nice pop 
when you release it. And it winds back up just fine. Smooth. There's no fighting it. It's uh, a pleasant experience to unwind and, and wind it back up. So your hands, real quick, are pencil hands, um, which I think look great. They run, the minute hand runs pretty much directly onto that um, minute track, so your, your legibility there is going to be quick and accurate. Um, and you also have a red tip seconds hand, which I think plays well with the red text on the dial. So good call there. Um, again, all your hands have that same kind of chrome look to it that your um, indice frames have. So when it's on wrist, it is extremely light as it should be expected for something that is a titanium watch. Um, so no issues there. I've got a pretty good fit on here. I had removed pretty much all the links because again, your boy's got small wrists. Um, but yeah, excellent sizing. Micro adjusts is pretty much in industry standard to have three. Um, would it be great to have more micro adjusts? Certainly. Um, but I got this to size up to myself just fine. I would say with the extra links we have here, you know, seven and a half is probably where you're going to max out. I wouldn't recommend it for big wristed folks. Um, so it also the lug to lug here is, is phenomenal. Um, especially for my six and a half inch wrist, it sits perfectly within here. Um, minimal overhang, if any at all. So definitely appreciate that. It might be a little tall, um, which I, I have no problem getting it under a cuff. Um, but I also am not really the kind of person who always wants it my watch to hide underneath my cuff. I kind of want to be able to see my watch, admire my watch, and you know, in the vain aspect that I have here, I do kind of want other people to see my watch and. Uh, you know, every watch nerd's dream is to have someone ask them about their watch. Has that ever happened for me? No, but you can be hopeful. So let's talk about whether or not this is worth you picking up. Now, places that you can pick them up. I think you're definitely going to be able to find them readily available from Dukesok Direct on their website. However, you're going to pay... $830 is the retail price on their website. That is outrageous. No way. Absolutely not. That is not what I paid for this. I got this on the secondhand market off eBay for significantly cheaper. I think Duke Sock partners with Watch Gang a lot. And Watch Gang essentially flooded the market on eBay with these watches a while back by including it, I guess, in their monthly shipment to their members, and a lot of folks didn't like the watch. Um, I, I really don't know why, because well, I think it's a great watch overall, but not for $830. $500? Max. Maybe. That's only because of the material used. Titanium? That's a premium material. Sapphire Crystal? Kind of premium. I mean, we can get our hands on that as modders anytime. Ceramic bezel insert, that is a genuine premium um, material there, so fine. Um, yeah, I certainly think the build quality is there to ask for $500. I'm happy I didn't pay that either. Um, if you get it used, that's, that's the best way to go. I wouldn't pay any more than $500 for this piece, and if you're paying $500, it better be next to me. Um, Speaking of condition, yeah, you get scratches a lot in your titanium, but it oxidizes in a manner that dulls your scratches. So people kind of call it a um, regenerating material, a self-healing material. Obviously, you're not growing extra titanium on it. It just dulls your scratches as it oxidizes, which is nice. Um, so one of my complaints here check out this bracelet i mean come on the end link flips out whenever it wants it might just be this watch 
I've reached out to Duke Salt. Obviously, I can't do anything with that warranty card. It's a secondhand watch to me, so I wouldn't have been able to do anything in the first place. But if I had purchased this direct and I didn't get a filled out warranty card, what would I do? Like that, that's not cool. So they need to address their warranty card situation. Address this awful end blink. Um, I can buy, I've been told I can buy a new bracelet for $100 from them, which I might be tempted to do because I like the watch enough. Um, I'd have to send it in to them. So we will see, maybe I'll do a video on what that experience is like once I kind of you know, save up some money because uh, I have some moments of truth for you guys at the end here um, that kind of hit me financially. Um, so, is this watch something I would use in the military? And I think that's going to be a running theme for most of my reviews. Would I use this watch in a military situation? The answer is yes, I would use this. Seiko NH35 is a reliable movement. It hacks, it hand winds. Um, so yeah, I... I definitely think this is accurate enough for me to go and use as a regular Joe um, out and about as a, a soldier in the field. It's light, so that's great. Um, you know, ounces equal pounds and pounds equal ping. So the lighter your gear is, the better. Um, so yeah, definitely it's got that going for it. It's got robust materials um, involved here, so no problem there. Screw down crown gives me the confidence to go into, um, you know, water in general, rivers, which I really hope to God I don't need to cross any rivers here anytime soon. Um, and if I do, I really hope it's in like a pontoon or something like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I would wear this out there. The loom is on point. Again, I would prefer electronic loom in a soldering situation because I can depend on it more than this. I have to be out and charge this up. Um, and then, you know, how long does it last? Not long enough compared to uh, electric loom. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I think it's good enough for those reasons. Plus the AR coating. Let's you see the dial at any time, so great legibility there. Um, yeah, so definitely I would rock this out in the field. Would I pay retail? Absolutely not. Should you pick one up? Absolutely. If you like titanium and ceramic and a sapphire crystal with AR coating, then yeah, I think you should pick one up used um, for under $500 would be ideal. All right, guys. Um, before I wrap this up, I am going to kind of run a little montage of my two weeks with this on the wrist. I got a couple of um, days where I, I was weak and I wore another watch, so you're not going to get a full 14-day slideshow. Um, but before we go, we're going to go ahead and throw on some different strap options here. Quick release is your friend. I would prefer quick release spring bars on anything. Like you give me the option, I'm going for it. So we got her on a nice brown leather strap here. Moving on to the next one. This will soothe um, everyone who is a problem with leather on a diver watch. We got a Barton silicone strap. Barton makes phenomenal straps. Um, and these quick release spring bars are phenomenal. So, you know, I'd, I'd say it looks pretty decent on here. It's a vintage style dive watch, so I would prefer it probably on a um, Tropic, which I do have um, some, and I'll show in my montage that there are a couple images of this on a Tropic, so we'll go ahead and check that out. Um, after we finish here with a native shot. All right, guys, let's go thread her, thread this um, NATO on here. And I think NATO, NATO strap is exactly where this guy belongs, other than that titanium bracelet. On this new bond strap, that that is classy right here um absolutely love this and because you kind of got larger end link space here 
having the NATO material to kind of bunch up and fill that up, that is the way to go, guys. Definitely a vote on the NATO here. Okay, so let me know what you think about my review here. Um, definitely looking forward to talking to you guys about my experience with the Morar later on in a couple of weeks here. Um, but, alright guys, this has definitely gone on long enough. Always ready, always there. Minuteman.